Hello, I'm Michael for GameWatch.com and welcome to our preview of Smash Up, the shuffle building card game that is a very popular tabletop that now has received a digital version courtesy of British developer Nomad Games. The game is currently in early access and is free to play with microtransactions and the developers are looking to stay in the early access for around two months while they iron out the various bugs in the game. So before we talk about the technical side of the game let's talk about what the game is so essentially it is a shuffle building card game which means that at the start of any match you and your opponent select two factions which are essentially two decks of cards to play there are various factions including aliens robots pirates ninjas geeks with some famous people in the geek deck like will wheaton and you combine the two factions of your choice to create a deck of cards now the purpose of the game is that you must acquire 15 victory points to win the match you acquire victory points by winning bases now bases are essentially lanes on the board that have a certain value attached to them to win and a certain value attached to becoming second place now you win bases by laying minions down on that base now each minion has a value and that value will be added. Each base has a breaking point. So for example, once a base gets 20 points worth of minions on it, then the base will score. And whoever has the most minion points on that base will win the base. Bases will give out victory points for first, second, and third place. There's a multiple of four players can play at any one time so potentially you can be earning victory points as long as you're in the top three of any given base now it sounds fairly simple you just play minions down on a base and eventually try and win the base by putting more minions on that base however things get a little bit complicated because minions have various abilities and can change the value very much like any card game like hearthstone you'll have card abilities on top of that you also have actions cards action cards are essentially spells and abilities that you can use that will perform a certain function for example one of the ninja cards i like is the ability to use an action to when a base is about to be scored so the, the the points have the breaking point of the points has been reached you're able to add an extra minion which will increase your total on that base just before it is scored there's various things that you can do with combinations in terms of action cards and minion cards and you often could combine the two to make sure that you draw lots of cards or you know get the double amount of turns that you're given and there's lots of tactical depth to the game every turn each player will have a minion and an action point so you'll be able to lay down a minion and use an action card on top of that you at the end of your turn you will draw two cards at the end of your turn and then the other player will go and do the exact same thing the combinations are fantastic and each faction has a very unique play style so the ninjas for example play very differently and have very different cards to that of the dinosaurs and the dinosaurs have very different cards to that of the aliens and the aliens have very different cards to that of the geeks and pirates etc and it's about combining two factions to create a very unique deck and a very unique playstyle, and trying to win out of the cards that you are given. There's a surprising number of tactical and strategic options available with the combination of the two factions as your deck, not knowing what cards are gonna come up, having both minion cards that have various abilities, having action cards that have various abilities, and then trying to combine the two that you know you can do various things and have various tactics open available to you so you, sometimes you'll be able to destroy enemy cards other times you'll be able to bring cards from your discard pile back onto play sometimes your cards will buff each other or they will allow you to you know place down multiple minions in one turn the options are fairly varied and each match doesn't last particularly long but it is fun there's plenty of options available regardless of your hand 
and it's a case of not only trying to beat the enemy and using your tactical options to you know get rid of the enemy's cards and make sure that you're placing more down but it's also important to make sure that you're focusing on bases now bases themselves have a varied value of victory points that they give out for first second and third place on top of that bases will also have effects and abilities that will take shape once they are scored so for example if you win a certain base then you might have to discard your entire hand if you become second then you might you know have a penalty or a buff or something like that so it's about you know making sure that you're going for the right bases sometimes it can be a case of letting the enemy become first in that base so that they trigger the ability which will you know hamper them and you'll be able to win the other bases so it's about playing the long game playing you know th the moves ahead of you and trying to outsmart your opponent and playing several moves in your head at once while you are trying to also play the current move that you have and it's something that i think translates very well into a digital board game for the most part there was a few bugs there was a few technical issues i had i did have like two crashes and there were some cases where the card abilities didn't activate or the system got screwed up when it came to turn order but for the most part it was a fairly stable build the one thing that i really didn't like was the actual user interface it looks like it's been built for a mobile port in the near future and i think this game will certainly succeed very well on a mobile port with the ability for local and online multiplayer as well as playing the ais but it's something that when you play on pc it is the layout and the user interface isn't particularly pc friendly in that sense there's nothing wrong with it it works as intended and you can easily find your way around it but for the most part it is very ios focused and that's something that i'm not particularly keen to now while the game is set on steam as free to play it's not strictly true you're only able to play three factions using the free to play mode and if you want the rest you have to purchase a starter pack which is around nine dollars or six pounds now for me that is a little bit disingenuous because there's no way to unlock those factions in the free-to-play mode so it is very much a case of you have to spend money on it to fully experience what the game has to offer another major problem currently in the early access is the fact that no one's really playing the game online so finding an online matchup against a real opponent can be a very time consuming if not impossible sometimes thing to do that being said it's certainly a great card game it's a lot of fun there's a lot of to like about it and it certainly has potential for the future whether it will be picked up in a big way on the digital platform is another matter entirely but i think if nomad games continue to work on it and improve the technical quality of the game make sure that all those bugs are ironed out i see no reason why it wouldn't be worth picking up the starter back and paying for the entirety of the game and as long as there retains a online player base for people to actually play each other then it could be relatively successful and a good digital board game translation and that's it for our preview of smash up thanks for watching head on over to gamewatcher.com for more and we'll see you next time